The greatest question a leader can ask himself. Saved, and here comes Lowe. To the playoff, Earl Bailey, who chipped in 31 points. My dad was sitting on my mom's couch watching a basketball game on our black and white Zenith TV set. And he was watching a basketball game. I didn't know what was going on and, until I saw one guy who was playing, didn't know who he was, watching him go up and down that court and just glide effortlessly through the air uh, over three or four opponents. So I asked my dad who he was. I said, Dad, who's that guy? He's pretty good. And he said, son, that's Dr. J. Something happened to me that day. Got really excited watching this guy play. I couldn't do what he was doing, but after that day, I was gonna find a way. Got cut my seventh grade year at 6'5", got cut my eighth grade year at 6'7". After I got cut the second time, the coach told me not to come back because he didn't have time to teach me how to play. My ninth grade year, when I was 6'9", a new coach came, and so I had to decide whether I was gonna try out. So here was an opportunity. I went in, I tried out, and I ended up making the team that year. And I don't only played 2.3 seconds per game. I went in for the jump ball, and as soon as we got the possession, the coach would call a timeout and take me out of the game. Finding those people who could help me get to that next level, and this, this coach in my ninth grade year was that guy. He sat me down and he said, son, if you want to be a great player, you've got a lot of work to do. With, uh, NC State, they came to my house. My mom was so impressed with uh, the coach at that time, Norm Sloan, and uh, he made promises. She said, you're going to take care of my baby, right? Uh, you're going to make sure he gets his education, he goes to class. He said, yep. And so after my freshman year with him, he got a job at another school. And man, I was, I was distraught. Me and a bunch of other guys on the team, because you kind of put your trust in the coach. You don't know what to do now. You don't, you don't know whether to follow him. I knew what I was going to do. I was going home. Called my mom. I said, mom, I'm coming home. My mom says, son, you may be going somewhere, but you definitely ain't coming here. You're going to get your education. You're going to wait till they hire someone and hear him out. You might like the guy. We waited. We sat in a little room as a team, waited for the new guy to come in. We didn't know him. So in walks a confident Italian man. First thing he said was, I know I'm going to win a national championship. And if you, if you stay, I promise you there won't be a day that goes by that I won't remind you of that ultimate goal. And so when he was done, after that 25 minutes or so, we were, he had our attention because he sold it. One of our first practices, man, he brings a ladder into the gym and he puts it under the hoop and he said, guys, come on over here. Today, for the whole two hours, this is all we're gonna do. I brought a bunch of nets. We're gonna go one at a time. Thorough, you go first, other guys will follow. You're gonna go up, I'm gonna give you these gold pair of scissors I keep on my desk. And each of you will cut a piece out of the net. We're going to practice cutting down the net today for two hours, and you guys are going to scream and holler like you just won a national championship. You're going to pick me up, you're going to carry me around this gym, and you're going to act like you would act if we won it. But he was trying to get us to put ourselves in that place. What would it feel like? What would it look like? That's how we started building our trust with, with Jim Balvano. It took us a couple of years, but we committed to him. He committed to us. And of course, the rest is history. Right, we beat Houston, who was the number one team in the country. Nobody ever thought we would do that, right? I mean, nobody but the folks in that locker room thought we had a chance against Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler. Seven seconds left on the clock, I'm in the left corner, I pass it to Derek Wittenberg, he shoots it, it's falling short, Lorenzo Charles grabs it, dunks it, game over, we're national champions. Crowd rushes the floor just like we imagined. And the, first of all, the ladder comes out and goes under the basket for the ceremonial, cutting down the nets. And the NCAA guy had a box, and he brought the box over to Coach Valvano. He opened it up, and there's a pair of scissors that he, he, he's supposed to use to cut the nets down. And Coach B does like this and stops them in his tracks and reaches in his coat pocket and pulls out the gold scissors that we practice with. The same pair of scissors. He brought them to the game in his pocket and had them all the time. And we kind of... It stunned all of us because we didn't know he had them. But in our minds, we were thinking, man, he really believed in us, right? He believed in us. And I don't know if he knew we were going to win it, but I think he was pretty confident we were going to give it a pretty good shot. That 
journey right there, probably as a platform in itself, has helped me, um, has helped me help others. On one of my first games when I made the NBA, as a rookie, I'm sitting at the Salt Palace, Coach Frank Layden's coaching the team, and he calls me into the game, and that night we're playing the Philadelphia 76ers. So I go in the game, and before the game starts, I get a tap on my shoulder, and the guy reaches his hand out and congratulates me on a great college season and welcomes me into the NBA. And I turn, and I saw the fro. It was Dr. J. The same Dr. J I sat next to my dad and watched. The same Dr. J that gave me the actual inspiration to want to be a basketball player. I'm standing next, I'm on the same court as the guy. Listen, I played with two great players in Malone and Stockton, played against Michael Jordan and the great players, but that's probably the greatest moment I've had in my, my NBA career. What inspired me to write Team of Destiny was the fact that stories are so powerful. And the book starts with the championship, right? It starts with what we did, what we created. And then it goes into, well, how, how did we do that? How did, these, how did these ordinary folks come together and do this special thing that's relived every single year? So I wanted to get all these stories, um, stories about ordinary people who did some extraordinary things together. You don't have to be a basketball fan. Um, you don't even have to know our story because I think what it, what it will do is it will, it will ignite something in you personally when you hear other people's stories about what they went through. You can find out a lot about what your brand means, whether it's your name or whether it's something you're trying to build um, that has your name behind it. The greatest question a leader can ask himself You know, how, how am I going to lead? I mean, that's, that's, it might sound broad. What kind of leader am I, right? What qualities do I have that will make this company a success?